Well boys, it is finally here. The 2025 Zephyrus G14. I really wanted to get the white one this time, but it is currently stuck in delivery hell. I've been using the 2024 model pretty much every single day since it released, and it was basically the perfect all-rounder laptop of 2024. So let's find out if the 2025 model is better, or if it's just too expensive for what it offers. And please like and subscribe if you like these type of videos. The Zephyrus G14 did not get a redesign this year, but it did change a little from the outside. Just like last year, it still has a full aluminum body. This means it is, wait for it, an absolute tank in terms of build quality. It has virtually no deck flex or keyboard flex and is basically as close to a MacBook as you can get in terms of build quality. The hinge does feel like it got a little bit tighter than last year, but this might just be a per unit difference, so there's a good chance that it probably just stayed the same. The display does still wobble a bit, but only when you purposefully tap the screen. It doesn't do this when you're actually using your laptop normally. I do wish the laptop hinge opened up a little further though. Either way, it still has one of the best built bodies out of all Windows laptops. It did get a little thicker though, but only by like 2 millimeters. And that 2 millimeters is visible by this little bump that's now on the bottom of the laptop. Some people were worried if this would scrape the laptop on the bottom since it sticks out a bit, but the laptop's rubber feet are actually a bit higher than before, so this thicker part does not touch the surface that it's on. This year it's also a little heavier, but barely, and it's still one of the lightest and sturdiest gaming laptops that money can buy. And it's now also one of the fastest 14-inch gaming laptops that you can buy. With a new AMD AI HX370 CPU and a very impressive RTX 5080, this thing should crush any competition at its size. That RTX 5080 gets 120 watts from the laptop, so it should be able to stretch its legs quite a bit. And that 16 gigabytes of VRAM should excite quite a lot of people. Also, with this newer AMD chip, it should be a lot faster and also run a lot more efficiently. So we'll see what that means in terms of heat and battery life later on in the video. Now I also ordered the cheaper RTX 5070 Ti version of this laptop, so I will be comparing them once that one arrives. So subscribe if you want to see that. The G14's ports have changed only slightly from before. It still has a great port selection, but now both USB-C ports have power delivery. So you can charge the laptop from both sides with USB-C up to 100 watts. The display out ports are still a bit confusing, but also very handy. It's the same as before. Its right USB-C port connects to its dedicated GPU, and its left USB-C port connects to the AMD iGPU. And then the HDMI port connects to the dedicated GPU as well. Its charger is now also 200 watts, but it's still pretty much the same size and weight, so pretty manageable. Now the keyboard is still awesome. It's pretty much the best laptop keyboard I have ever used so far. The keys themselves are apparently a tiny bit larger than before, but I myself don't really notice it. And it still has a full RGB backlight, although I kind of wish it had per key RGB, like on Razer Blade laptops. Speaking of lighting, the slash on the back of the laptop is still here. I kind of forgot about it since I don't really use it that much. But it is pretty handy to see when you've got a notification while your laptop is in sleep mode. Other than that, it just looks pretty cool. But I do wish it had the full anime matrix display like on the 2023 models. Because that did look pretty cool. Its trackpad is also still really good. Again, it's basically one of the best trackpads on a Windows laptop. I mean, it's large, it has a great click, and it's made of glass, so it feels premium. But I really wish they would have used a vibrating touchpad, like on a MacBook or on a Microsoft Surface laptop. You might think I'm starting to nitpick here, but once you see the price of this laptop, I think you'll understand. I cannot say anything bad about its display though. With a 3K 120Hz OLED display, this is pretty much the best screen you can get on a laptop. I know I've said it like a thousand times already, but the colors that OLED has, together with those perfect blacks, really have spoiled me. If you've never used an OLED display before, it's basically like putting on glasses that cure blindness and colorblindness in one go. Every single game, movie, 
image, basically everything you watch on it just looks good. At 500 nits brightness, it also gets bright enough to be able to use it outside. And at 3K with 120 Hz, it's very sharp, as well as very smooth. So playing faster paced games is a breeze. It is a glossy display, but it has an anti-reflective coating which handles sunlight and other glare very well. As for its speakers, well, have a listen for yourself. These are the best speakers on any Windows laptop I have ever tested. Except for the Zephyrus G16, that one is a little better. It has Dolby surround sound, which genuinely sounds like the sound is around you. It has incredible bass that scales well when you turn the volume up. And it gets very loud. You're probably never gonna use it at higher than like 50% volume. I actually frequently use my 2024 G14 to play music in my house, since it easily fills a room with noise. But the 2024 model and the 2025 model sound very similar in terms of their speakers. So I don't know what ASUS meant by increasing the volume by 252% in the 2025 model, because I really don't hear a difference. The 2025 Zephyrus G14 has a pretty good webcam and microphone. Yeah, it's not studio level or anything, but for a laptop, it looks and sounds very good. And it doesn't use any aggressive facial smoothing or anything, which is great. Now the Zephyrus G14 comes with ASUS's own gaming software called Armory Crate. Armory Crate is a pretty good app if you compare it with other companies' gaming software. I mean, it has a lot of functionality power profiles, a manual mode where you can boost the components while you're charging, and a bunch of handy settings for your laptop. On top of that, it also has a resource manager overlay where you can see very useful information while you're playing games. But it's a bit annoying to use since it's pretty slow and bloated. And it has some unnecessary limitations like not being able to select the turbo or manual profile while you're on battery. Well, there's an open source program called G-Helper, which replaces Armory Crate and basically fixes all of that. Quick disclosure, this is not an advertisement. This is just genuinely a very handy app. It runs off of a single EXE file, so you don't have to install any programs, and it starts up literally instantly. It offers fully custom power and fan profiles, which can be used while plugged in, but also while on battery. And you can even undervolt your CPU, which can give you more battery life and lower CPU temperatures. Now, it does not have that resource manager that Armory Crate has, which is a bit of a bummer. But personally, I do prefer it over Armory Crate. Now, even though this 2025 model only just came out, G Helper already just works perfectly fine on it. So check out my full G Helper tutorial if you'd like to know more. Now, let's finally see what this puppy can do with some benchmarks. In Cinebench, that Ryzen chip destroys its competition. With 12 cores, it is genuine competition to desktop chips, which is very impressive. And the same goes for Geekbench, where it performs quite well. In 3D Mark Time Spy, that RTX 5080 scores very high, but the CPU is actually lower than I expected. Stay tuned, because I'll try to explain later why this might be happening. But now, let's see how this thing handles some games. Huh? Okay. I love you, man. Huh? Okay. Kinda game. You motherfucker, man. You, man. So to absolutely nobody's surprise, this RTX 5080 performs very well. 
It runs every single game I threw at it with high frame rates, even at 3K resolution. But it's actually slower than the 2023 Zephyrus G14, which had an RTX 4090. So I guess this time around ASUS wants to be a little bit more conservative with how much power they push in this tiny body. But like I said before, the CPU scored a bit lower than I expected in 3 Mark Time Spy. So why is that? Well, in combined workloads, the CPU and GPU have to fight for wattage, since its cooling system can only handle so much heat. So most of the time while gaming, the CPU will actually sacrifice some of its power to give to the GPU. Now, most games do need that extra GPU power, so this is perfectly fine, and it still results in some awesome performance for such a tiny laptop. But a weapon is only as good as its wielder, and a laptop is only as good as its battery lasts. So how long does it last? Well, I tested it in two scenarios, under light use and while gaming. In the light use test, I just played a YouTube video while doing nothing else with its display at full brightness, so 500 nits, at a 60 Hz refresh rate with the performance mode on silent. And it lasted pretty damn long at 10 hours and 50 minutes. Now keep in mind that just watching a YouTube video while doing nothing is a very light task. So while you're doing work or even some light web browsing, battery life will probably be more around six to seven hours. But that is still a full school day and better than 99% of all laptops, which is great. In the gaming test, I ran Battlefield 1 at the same settings as before, but now with the power mode on performance. And just like any other gaming laptop, it lasted a little over an hour. Look folks, if you want to play games on the go, you should just get a gaming handheld PC. Now a powerful laptop means a lot of heat. So can this little body manage all that? Well, it actually can. While gaming, the highest temperatures I ever saw for the CPU were around 90 degrees, and for the GPU, it never went above 85 degrees. Now 90 degrees might sound very high, but it is actually perfectly safe and even a little better than the 2024 G14. And it doesn't have any cooling issues like the 2023 model with that RTX 4090 had, so ASUS tweaked this cooling system quite well. It does still get as loud as any other gaming laptop, but it's definitely on the quieter side. And under light use or while idle while using G Helper, the fans don't even kick on, so it is absolutely silent. Unfortunately, the year is 2025, so laptop upgradability is few and far between. The 2025 Zephyrus G14 does still have an upgradable M.2 SSD though, and you can also replace its Wi-Fi card. But Wi-Fi 7 is pretty damn fast, so we'll see if that's needed in the future. It has no upgradable RAM though, so choose your model wisely before you buy it. The 2025 model does have 32GB of RAM as its base spec now, so I guess that's nice. But now comes its big bombshell, its pricing. Currently, the 2025 Zephyrus G14 starts at 3000 bucks. Ouch. But the model we have here with the RTX 5080 is 3900 bucks. Oof. Like I said, the base spec does now come with 32 gigabytes of RAM, but that price is just way too damn high. This is probably Nvidia's fault since their prices are just stupid. And a cheaper RTX 5070 and 5060 model should release later this year, so stay on the lookout for those. That is, if you can even find them. I've been waiting for my 5070 Ti G14 for about a month, and it is still not here. It was supposed to release in like March, but now we are almost in May. I only got this 5080 model because it just so happened to be available at a local store of mine. I also haven't seen many, if at all, any reviews on this model. So its availability is... Well, it's not available at the moment. So here's the big question. Is the 2025 G14 worth it? Well, I would say no. Do not get me wrong. This is the absolute best compact gaming laptop that money can buy. It does literally everything perfectly. It has a beautiful display. It has a great keyboard and trackpad. It has the best speakers in a Windows laptop. It has great battery life and it has an incredible build quality and portability. But it costs way too much. And with the 2024 model being almost identical, 
and almost 2000 bucks cheaper, its biggest weakness is itself. Look, if you want to spend almost 4000 bucks on a laptop, this guy checks pretty much every single box. It is the ultimate device at this size. But does it have a better value than the 2024 model? Well, I'll be comparing these two in full detail in the next video, so stay tuned to find that out. Now let me give a huge shout out to my YouTube members. Inky, Soundwive, Thomas, Mr. Frosty Dude, Dropzone One, Martijn Snijkers, David Gill, and Felix Nathan. If you become a YouTube member, you get early access to content of mine, a shout out at the end of every video, and you'll support me as a creator to make these videos. And you'll also be part of the Cool Guys Club, so you can use gifts like these in the comment section. So please join the club if you're interested. I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye. Chega a escrever, bora dar uma mirada aqui, vem. Tô indo aí, tô indo aí.